Start by folding each cord evenly in half and attaching it to a dowel rod with a Lurx head knot. Repeat this for all 12 cords. Once you have all 12 cords attached, find the four cords directly in the middle. Then, once you have these four cords found, take the set of two on the left side and tie one square knot. with the four cords on the right side. Now we're going to tie a row of three alternating square knots. So I'm going to bring in the two cords to the left of our first square knot, take the two cords that are on the left side of that original square knot to tie a new one. Take the four cords directly in the center to tie an alternating square knot. Then repeat on the right side by taking the two original cords and two new cords. Repeat the same process of alternating rows of square knot for three more rows.
Right, so once you have tied all five rows of your square knots, we're going to basically create a mirror image of what we did up here. So we're gonna start with a full row of six square knots, but we're going to do a little special step when we tie these. Okay, so we're going to start with the four cords here all the way on the far left, and I'm gonna take that cord all the way on the far right, and I'm gonna switch places with the cord next to it. That's a part of the other square knot, okay? Just like that, I'm just gonna cross one over the other, and then I'm gonna tie my normal square knot with these four cords. Three original cords and the new one we just crossed over. Then when we move on to our next square knot, we're going to do the exact same. So the cord on the far right is gonna switch places with the cord next to it. We're gonna repeat the exact same process for one more row. So again, we're going to take all four cords here on the far left, take the cord on the far right, and just switch places with the cord it's next to. Once you have three of those full rows of those square knots, we're going to go back and do alternating rows. So this time, instead of adding cords, we're going to leave off cords. So I leave off the two cords on the far left and take my next four cords to tie my square knot.
Now we're just going to slide all of our cords off our dowel rod. scissors and cut each loop right in half so that you have two strings. Our next step is to begin tying double half hitch knots all the way around our little circle design. So you're going to want to find one of the longest cords left in your project. So it should be one of the ones kind of off to the side here. So if you look at your project, you'll have a starting point here where you have the two cords. So if you follow the line up to the edge, one of these cords right in this area should be the longest. So I'm just going to take this cord all the way here at the edge, and this is going to be my leading rope. So I'm kind of going to just point it alongside all these cords coming down diagonal to the left. I'm going to take my very first cord hanging down here and tie a double half hitch knot. on to your next cord and repeat. And this is what it will look like once you have wrapped your double half hitch knots all the way around following the line of square knots. Okay, so here at the bottom you're going to have a bit of a gap, which is totally fine. And our next step is to actually tie a gathering knot to act as our stem. So I'm actually going to flip my project upside down. And then here where that gap is, I'm going to take three cords from each side. And this is what I'm going to tie my gathering knot around. I'm going to bring in a new cord in a different color. And I'm going to fold it in half so that I have a short little tail, a loop that hangs below, and then a long piece of cord to actually tie the knot with. Place that right over your cords that you're going to tie the gathering knot around. And then you're going to take the long cord and just start wrapping it around all the cords. Making sure that loop stays below and that short tail sticks up. going to want to wrap this around as many times to get the length of stem you want. I always recommend making your gathering knot at least go around five times, but you're probably going to do more to get a longer stem in this case. So once that stem is the length you want, you're going to stick that long piece we were using right through the loop. Then that short tail that was sticking up, we're going to pull on that nice. You're going to keep pulling that until you feel like the knotted part is right in the center. Then take both the top and bottom piece and pull on them together to tighten everything up. 
Now, your gathering knot might not be sitting right at the bottom, which is totally fine, because we're going to just pull on each individual orange string to gently move our gathering knot into place and to also smooth out these cords. So you might have to go through and do each cord a few times to get it just right. And then we're gonna trim off these remaining cords. When you trim off the top cords, you're just going to do all the cords, including the orange. And this is what it's going to look like so far. Now again, you can make this gathered section even longer. You can make it long enough to curve if you would like or just keep it short and straight. Now our final step is to actually glue all the ends to the back of our project so that they stay completely hidden. So we're gonna flip that project back around once again and we're gonna get some fabric glue or some hot glue, whatever you have on hand to secure these ends to the back of your project. Now an optional last step, especially if you used hot glue like I did where it can get a little bit messy, is to add a felt backing. Okay, I like to do this because it gives the project a little more structure, but also it just cleans up the back. So I'm going to take some orange felt and I'm actually going to just hot glue my project right down on this and then cut the felt off. And there we go. Now my pumpkin coaster is complete. So I hope you guys found this video helpful and inspiring and thank you so much for watching.